I grab one of his arms and mo like hold it against his back as I reach with the uh, the arm that was holding the knife. Like I grab the one that he was holding his gun with, gun with, or whatever. Okay, so basically use whatever approach you want against that. All oh, right, I will. Hmm. I guess that would Probably. be forceful. So nope, terrible. Good, that one that is forceful. He breaks out of my grasp. I have to stab him. <coughs> I mean, basically what he does, because after all, he rolled a five against a zero, so he gets something special. He ranges out, out of your grasp, and he does something like, he doesn't grab his gun or a knife, but basically he makes a throw or something, that you get thrown uh, towards the, the other party members, or either fall on somebody, and then he starts running, and like there's like a, you hear a crack clink in the uh, radio, but you realize it's not yours, uh, with only one word, intruders. Oh well. Uh, I stand back up and ready my assault rifle. I mean, like he starts. Running, he's he's not keeping quiet. So, some of the corridors and in the. So yeah, I think this might be the time when he. I mean, do you follow him? Um, I look on the other guy. How's he looking? Um, he did. Okay. The uh, you realize that the bullet hit him just above the uh, body armor in the neck. That was a really good shot of Stu. Kudos. Um, I take his night vision goggles. Okay. So I can see in the dark now too. <coughs> okay. And then I follow him. What's the rest is doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, Stu is kind of uh, shimming down the uh, side of the <laughs> entranceway and no, the side of the building and uh, kicks open the uh, side entrance and says, Everybody down on their knees now! To an empty corridor. Yes. And the witch is in which he stares for a moment and then uh, walks inside. I bet you love that, won't you? And walks to the nearest closed door and kicks it down and s says, Everybody to their knees now! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I would be trying to get getting up by now since nobody has been shooting me for some time. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but at this point he's kind of searching for any of the mm. same uh, guys that he shot before. So yeah. on the I walk up to the I walk up to the house essentially. Mm. On the base, uh, not the basement. On the ground floor and the first floor, there were no more enemies. I follow the guy. Yeah. And so the, if you went guy, up or down. And the guy went down to the basement. As I hear, as I probably hear uh, Stu screaming, I'll make sure to close the door behind me. As I hear like doors just being kicked open. Okay. So eventually you'll come across the door and be like, "Oh, a door to kick open." <laughs> stairs. Stairs. Kick down the stairs. <laughs> I think that would work. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I Good kick job, my mate. way down the stairs. <laughs> you kick everything on your way down the stairs. Anyways. Mm -hmm. uh. Yes, you go down. Uh, at one point, very quickly after you get inside, uh, Give me a forceful approach. Stu or me? Uh, you. Oh. Five. 
free? Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. For a moment, as you, th there was that a small feeling that you tried to take a step forward. You took it, but then like something tried to jer jerk you backwards. Uh, some kind of invisible force like push you to the uh, wall or something. Like it was just a feeling for a moment. Of course, nothing happens. You stay your ground and like look around. There is absolutely nothing. Weird. And as you still like following through the corridors and whatnot, uh, first what you see is that like a cup drop, drop, drop. You see before you like a uh, drops of blood coming from from the ceiling to the floor, and on the floor there's like a blood. And if you look with a flashlight on the ceiling. You see a sprawled body of a um, hazmat, like the body in the hazmat suit that just like a pushed into the ceiling. It's very, very fresh. Is it moving? No. Oh, is the blood dropping from bullet wounds? Uh, this guy didn't have bullet wounds. But it's uh, right now it's possible to tell from what wounds because his body looks mangled. It, it just drops blood. Oh my! And this boy still crashes in. Everybody on the fucking floor right now! Oh hey! And the, has uh, and the hazmat guy falls down on uh, <laughs> Carver. <laughs> I just point up. Does that count? <laughs> like I'm sure he would probably catch up while I'm staring at this. <coughs> I suppose even I would catch up sooner or later. Mm. I essentially follow the kicked up doors. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's like... this, this was in one of the corridors, not in the rooms on the basement. Mm. The fuck am I looking at? You see hazmat suits on the ceiling. And you thought I was crazy. I still think you're crazy. <laughs> Why that? I say, I... just we not touch any of the dripping blood. Alright, I'll take whatever uh, small thing uh, that's within reach and uh, toss it at the uh, hazmat suit on the ceiling. Uh, sorry, uh, snooze out for a moment. Uh, what do you toss at the ceiling? Uh, whatever small thing is within reach. Okay. Like a Oops. pen. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so you do that. For a moment, pen just impales the, like, you throw it lightly, but then, like, on your eyes, like, pen, like, and then, uh, like, went, like, Accelerates when it comes closely and penetrates the armor. Yeah, it penetrated the body, and then uh, both of them just fall into the ground. There, it's not on the ceiling anymore. I kick it. It kicks oh, you back. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I shoot it. <laughs> I shoot <It's> you back. <laughs> the the mangled body kicks me back. I unload a clip of my automatic rifle into it. <laughs> Does it actually kick me back? You know what? I joked at the first, but this is some strange shit. So you felt that something kick you back, mm. and nobody else saw anything happening. So <coughs> you have now unloaded a clip into a dead guy. Yes, I have now unloaded a clip into a dead body. You are now in unclipped a body into the dead dead guy, and then I reload. Okay. I suppose I stop you from shooting more. Mm. I wouldn't, anyways. Usually, <laughs> usually a clip is enough to keep a dead body dead. Yeah, as you like go around, you realize that the basement is not the end. Like there are some even more lower levels, but they are <coughs> all of them are like sealed. Like somebody sealed them, but because. Uh, 
Zach rolled a 6, so his character would find a way be be beyond them. Uh, one of the doors that's still on the basement, uh, he wouldn't, he won't be able to find a way behind it. It's like a typical wall, then like a massive steel uh, in engraved in the wall, like uh, doors with. Uh, with no visible doorknob or like, like you know the how the massive doors in Half-Life One were opening with those uh, two rods, metal rods or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, next to them, uh, next to them there is uh, an electronic lock. Huh. I have an idea. You're not going to like it. It involves that dead body that was on the ceiling. I don't think it can open it. To be honest. Uh, I mean, electronic clock like you need to input a key code uh... to open the door. All right. I mean, it may one, have kicked one... you, but it's not going to open the door for you. I have a grenade. <laughs> All right. Let me try something first. One, 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 one. Error. Well, one, 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 one. I slap you on the hand. Error. Are there, letter, are there letters or is it just numbers? Uh, numbers. Damn, swordfish wouldn't work. <coughs> Alright, 2109. Pretty five. obvious that. Uh, you know what, you can give me a clever? Clever, clever thing? check. Yeah. Because who says it ain't even works in the first place? Five six five three two three. As you input these few codes, trying to check it out, you kind of realize that this electronic lock doesn't seem like a shot. But who it says? It doesn't actually have any power. But who says? Uh... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want that explanation, and maybe like other that maybe there is like a somebody on the other side changing the thing. Because I, if you listen really closely, there are like some muffled sounds of not talking, but somebody moving, of moving something, of some maybe machinery working. The power is here because otherwise the mercenaries, their equipment wouldn't work. Or <coughs> Here's an idea. Run. I put the grenade, like, I just set it on, like, one of the steel bars or whatever. Pull the pin and run. I am already <laughs> hiding behind the <laughs> I told you to run. And if you're wondering where I got a grenade, it's from the trap that I disarmed earlier. Because you mentioned there was one. Did I? Yes, you mentioned there's a trap with a grenade. And then I noticed uh, but it. my my idea was that it wasn't a typical grenade, but it was the grenade that would make you have like fuck free flash grenade. Oh, mm. would I know that? No. <laughs> so okay, when um, so I'm still doing this because I'm I'm just imagining okay, it's so a normal it, grenade. Yeah, you you set the grenade, you go on the corner. <laughs> And instead of a big loud boom that might not have taken down the door, because it's really <laughs> strong and powerful, so the single single grenade doesn't have that much firepower. Yeah. To be sure to get bus by that door, you probably need, need a what's the word? Uh, when you like plasma uh, torch. Yeah, plasma torch. Or like very very powerful explosive that would probably bring the rest of the building down on your head, like a pack of yeah. C4. Anyway, so you do that, you hear a surprisingly small explosion instead of like a boom, there's like a <laughs> and the sound of a sizzling smoke. Uh, do you like get? Look at it and get back into the corridor to check out the effect. I just like peek around the corner. 
there is a cloud of smoke filling the slowly filling the tunnel. The smoke looks very it it, start, it changes colors. Oh my psychedelic smoke. Um Did we find the way down? Yeah, you because you rolled a six, you can. Is it through the smoke? No, it it doesn't necessarily need to be. Okay, let's yeah, go. Some some way into the lower levels past the sealed doors is found. If we uh, find anything that can break walls or floors, let's just try to break into the room from above next time. Uh, sadly, I don't have that prepared because yeah, that was a. Even with what they are doing here, they didn't start uh, explosive devices. I mean, if we had like, a hammer or something, like a sledgehammer. Uh, mm. Basically, we probably wouldn't find something like that, though, so. Like, okay, so. Continue downwards. Plot yeah, demands it. Uh, found uh, you inside that the few rooms that are not completely destroyed, uh, you find a few decayed bodies. And some of them are military. Some of them are some of them are in scientific uniforms. Hmm. Uh, you also find. Okay, so these findings will mean that the time is at least that. Uh, the, the time will be after the finding. After what I say now. And basically, you find. Several, uh, it's mainly f uh, Geralt because he spearheaded the search and he's really good at it apparently. Um, <coughs> you find uh, several leftover heavily redacted documents uh, suggesting some project happening with keywords signal, control, and mind. Mm. And even, and one of them. That was as not heavily redacted, and probably somebody forgot to take it take it out. Uh, you find more details because official story, it was that the radio re, this station was closed because of the budget cut. Uh, this document you found, uh, it basically it basically speaks about uh, something uh, some kind of experiment that was scheduled to happen in the uh, late 29 <coughs> yeah some one particular experiment was planned in late 29 that was uh, um, that the experiment had plan to touch on subjects on telepathy, long-range communication, and mind control. At least that's what the words are saying. And then that was f what you could have find on 4. And basically the biggest bomb that you find when the time is like that. Because it was really, really well hidden. Probably on the way like fighting another paranormal effect. Uh, somebody fucked up and in one document didn't delete it or didn't redact it. And you learn of two names. Names that at least one of them you already knew. That this person is quoted as a military overseer of the entire operation name is Colonel Zaharia Kane. Uh, along and there's the second name, uh, the Major Chad Newman. The, the guy, the name is, the second one is a new one for you. The people in this town do, do not hear and or, no, or knew about this guy. And the document suggested that he's used, that the Chad Newman is most usually as a Cleaner of sorts. <laughs> Cleaning the base of dirt. <laughs> I hand it over to Cordelia and tell her to save it as evidence. Sure.
Alright, so now what? Back to the station? Mm. We never did find that one guy. Who? The guy that lives here. Oh uh, yeah, that... the uh, guard? No, you, you, you found you, the guard. You found the, the one he didn't find was the two, the two cops. Uh, yes, yeah, we did. We found them dead. I, for, I uh, forgot about them. Yeah, we probably found their bodies. No, you found them bodies next to the security guard. I forgot about them. Okay. Oh. Okay. So, um, what do you do about the guys behind the locked steel, do steel door thing? Uh, so you are thinking about that. I'm not sure how the sounds goes on, but if you are getting like co closer to the ground level or in the basement, mm -hmm. uh, you start hearing the sound like the rotors of the helicopter in the distance. But you get the feeling that it's coming here. Looks like you've got a ride out. <laughs> yes, I suggest we wait. Because you said this building has two stories, right? <coughs> Yes. I mean, above the ground anyways? Uh, uh, like ground floor, first story above the ground, and that's all of mm -hmm. the building. Then let's go to the second story. Let's hide the body. Or the first floor above the ground floor. Mm. I guess we can take the bodies with us. Essentially, do they land on the roof or do they land outside? I imagine they're probably going to land outside. So why are we going to the second floor? Because we also haven't searched the second floor yet. They're arriving really fucking soon. I imagined you already did that. Oh. To hide, to hide then. Mm -hmm. I grab an assault rifle from one of the dead boys. Mm. Mm. So, we're hiding right now. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because we want to see who comes out of that helicopter. Well, you assumed they will land. Yep. Yes, if they don't land, we'll simply go to a car and drive out of here. Mm. Yeah, the because it's dark, and uh, I also steal a night vision goggle when I'm at it. There yeah, should be but two of them. what I say that helicopter is high up in the air and it's blinding the building with its uh, not searchlight. Search searchlight. Search search so I'm I'm just saying that because of that, it might be hard to identify the model and the allegiance it might sound like a typical block hog but you know yeah it's, it's like it goes around the building like the search like goes around the area on the uh, on the building uh, on the radio dish and then it just goes off, but the sound of a uh, helicopter is still there. Mm. The helicopter circles, but <coughs> they do not land yet. Mm. Now that they turn off the search, like, can we identify the helicopter? Well, it looks like a black hawk. <laughs> it was a one after all. Mm. Well, we should. Uh... Not go out while they're sitting there. Because we still don't know who it is. And it seems like a very bad idea. Because if they're along with the guys that tried to kill us, they're probably going to try to kill us too. Mm. Uh -huh. And I'm sure if they're not trying to kill us, that they'll understand us for thinking that way. So and something crazy is probably going to happen at midnight. I mean, yeah, what? probably. Mm -hmm. After uh, what we've seen, yes. Who said it will be midnight? Probably like one True. hour, one hour when later than midnight. It's always midnight. Okay. Exactly. So at this hour, uh, as you are ducking down, hunkering down on the first floor, at the thirty ten p.m. Uh, are we gonna wait here in half an hour? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shrek? It depends because that's for yeah. that's how long the this chopper goes around. Yeah. Okay. Nothing else, nothing else is happening. It beats his time. 
like 15 minutes later i'm probably gonna turn like 21 45 i'm probably gonna turn to everyone else like are we really gonna sit here do we have any idea how long this chopper will stay nope mm. you can get out there if you want i just had a suggestion do you think you could shoot the helicopter with your assault rifle <laughs> mm, well probably. i would do anything but i meant shoot the pilot no yeah. it's very hard slash impossible Mm. Shooting the helicopter without, first of all, you don't have sniper rifle, second of all, you don't have clear angle, yeah. I mean, I should have taken a sniper rifle. Oh well, keep waiting then. Mm. <coughs> I mean, if we had a sniper rifle, it would probably be like a bolt action rifle, anyways. And they do and not. Wants those? They do not issue sniper rifles to standard police. To SWAT, sure, yeah. but not to standard police. Mm. Okay, so at 10 p.m. there are some sounds coming from the uh, floor below you, like s people moving, and then Let's there you get them. many of them. Oh. There is then there is like a loud bang, and the front door that was barricaded just f flies up, flies off completely destroyed maybe half of the not half like some part of the wall also goes out with it uh, there's some fire smoke and then uh, the the squad like the people that's at least uh, six of them they are all like Armored with gas mask, looking you know armed and dangerous. They like <laughs> like with typical military stance. They run out and to <coughs> and at the same time the sounds of the helicopter like it goes goes down and down. So it lands uh, like. 300 meters from the building uh, trying to position itself uh, between so that the radar dish is covering the black hawk from the building mm. so yeah these guys are running towards the helicopter see I told you they were the bad guys who? Now let's get out of here. Did you uh, say there were six guys from the basement who came up and started running towards the helicopter? Or what did you say? Yes. Okay. I'd second that. Let's get out of here. Or we could go search we could go see if the room they uh that metal door room is open yet. <coughs> I don't wanna... Who says they didn't close it off after they left? Absolutely no one said that. And I, and I would've... I don't would've been surprised if they didn't. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna... I wanna go home. Take a nice <laughs> bath. Okay, let's do that. Look at some porn. <laughs> that sounds like a wonderful idea. <laughs> Well, I suppose we leave and go back to our cars as soon as it's safe, like 10 minutes later or so. Who goes with whom? We're all walking in a group of bored and tired people. Ah, but you, st <laughs> ah, you still have your car. I mean, there's still like a leftover car of the dead guys. You have your own, so do you all ride mm. with you with to get together? We'll leave the dead guy's car there for now. Okay. Yeah, we'll call we don't in have the, the keys to it anyways. We could probably yeah. steal it, but yeah, let's just go. Mm. I mean, uh, should we radio contact to ask them to bring body bags? Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll just do that on the way back. back. Mm. Uh, whatever. Uh, Too tired. <coughs> remind me, because I might have zoned out for a moment there. Uh, did, and now don't retcon that. Don't retcon that. Just ask me truthfully. Did... Uh, Geralt informed you, Stu, and uh, many Stu, that the... Uh... Oh shit, maybe I forgot to say one information about her. 
Uh, and no, there's not information like that on her. Uh, did Gerald told to and Cordelia that Sarah Smith was on cor corporate's payroll? Well, so it's me too. At the very least, I um mentioned it in front of them. Okay, so still it work. Okay, so Stu, as you are riding down towards the city, <coughs> uh, first of all, you get a call on your cell phone. She turns it off while you're on duty. Do you have it off? I look look at her and I look at you. And you no. know what? I'd say Stu, because you are a Perfect. So I say, yeah. yeah, you you know who's calling because you gave her the number. Hey, Sa Sarah is calling. <laughs> you know it's Sarah from the the ringtone of your telephone. You have never talked to her before, but you know it in your heart. <laughs> hey, babe. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Hello, Stu. Everything's all right. Uh yeah. Miss your ass. Uh, yeah, I miss you too. Uh, listen, and because my voice is killing me, so we, I would just give a shortened version. I will give you a fate point uh, because of the pervert that you will just uh, say everything to her what happened. Mm. Trying to impress that, her. That she, that she just. And innocently ask like what happened, like what's going on, wasn't there like anything strange? And yeah, I will give you a fake point to just come clean that yeah, there was some sh weird shit going on. And explain the situation. Uh, I uh, assume I'm still in the same car with everybody else. <laughs> oh god, yes you are, we're probably gonna stop you if you start. <laughs> Mm, did you no. say that it was Sarah? <coughs> no, you didn't. You didn't need to say tell it was her. Well, you know that it's a female. Yes, but there's quite a few of them in this world. And in your life? Well, take not in this life, but in the world, there's well, at least a lot of them. Maybe it's <laughs> not uh, really a per, uh, per more a uh, woman. I still get the fate point if I interrupt him. Besides, I would say Gerald is focused on driving. Okay. Mm. Well, well, maybe I've seen some really weird shit tonight. And and because I know it. And I would give Cordelia a fate point if she. Uh, yeah, we would do something different. She's so paranoid on different things, but she thinks she can trust her teammates, so she would not react at all or think that story Or maybe is... simply I'm paranoid, I'm looking outside the window, thinking about other things, not exactly, ex not really bothering what the rest of them do, <coughs> and instead just looking behind us, you know, stuff like that, okay. not listening. So if you are not focusing on Stu, then you can, you get one fate point, and if Stu yeah. is coming clean with Sarah and telling her things, then he also gets one fate point. Maybe I had some. I seen some very weird shit tonight. Uh, abandoned asylums where a fucking uh, uh, insane guy torturing kids. So that same same torturous fucker just hulking out, going all Rambo on us. Managed to get a good shot at him. Uh, uh, when I backflip down to the car like fucking uh, like a fucking lucha libre motherfucker. <coughs> then this was this other guy who uh, fucking uh, went around to the police station trashing about like he fucking owned the place. And then there was this other guy see, in hazmat suits that fucking stuck to ceilings and uh, 
There was choppers, secret doors, fucking everywhere, man. People in the hazmat suits like she ask interesting, were they the military? Oh, they were blue. I don't really, uh, you know, I don't really have a take a good look around when there's women around. Uh, yeah, okay, so she thanks you for information, like, like, see you later or something? Alright, see your ass later. <laughs> no wonder you've been expelled here.